Welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. We're going to key like some um, profile cylinders or what we call in Australia Euro cylinders. Now this cylinder can be a little bit tricky and can put you off. The reason being is because this centre part here it moves, but it still is what we call a fixed cam. The reason this one moves is because it has an anti-panic feature in it, meaning that one key can be on the inside and turned, and you can come along from the outside and put a key in and turn the turn it as well, or reactivate it. There we go. Now I can reactivate it. And likewise, I can have a key on the outside, take my key out from this side, even though this one is turned, I can come along with this key and activate the lock. So before, when we had uh, cylinders such as this, you basically had a fixed cam, you put one key in from one side and you wouldn't be able to put a key in and activate it from the other side. You can put a key in, but it wouldn't pick up the cam in the middle. So this is the older style, this is the newer style, this is part number 3162HESCKD, 3162HESCKD. CKD. Uh, we can key in like as well, that's what I'm going to demonstrate for you. So somebody also posted on the comments that's pretty cool that you can remove the whole top cap to re-key it. Now in, in Australia when you can remove the whole top cap that's generally for a lazy cam or floating cam which are used on screen doors as you can see here. Very rarely are they used on mortise locks, it's more of screen doors which are like your security door, your aluminium type door that goes on on the outside of a, a house. So that's a floating cam, looks the same but that's designed for screen doors. These ones are designed for uh, mortise locks, European uh, mortise locks, or Euro locks, if you want to call them. Uh, these, once again, can be rekeyed by removing the caps. Very similar as this one here. This is a one-piece cap setup. This is a two-piece cap setup. Uh, with these ones here, uh, they generally don't come off in caps. We've got a couple of different options. One, we can remove the circlip, flip the key around, and use a jig, a yoke jig, to hold the top pins. That's one option. On these ones here, they're designed with Allen keys. I don't mind the Allen keys, they do take a little bit longer. The only downside is you've got to make sure you get all your Allen keys in there nice and tight because the cylinder sits upside down like so. And if any of those come out, well, you're going to drop that into you know the lock or somewhere or it could jam when it comes in and out. So you've got to make sure you do them tight. All right, so to rekey three of these, I've got one cylinder here. Oh, they also come with a big screw too. Uh, what I'm going to do is first find out where, which, which key has my lowest cuts out of all four. And I'm going to use that to start off with to rekey the rest of it to it, so that way I can cut down the remaining keys, save myself on a few key blanks. Because it's always good to save a few key blanks, and key blanks are, well, everything's starting to cost more money now, including key blanks. And I'm using Lego as a drop mat because it doesn't move. And it's cheap, and it's really good for rekeying because you can put plugs on uh, Lego when you key them up, like so, and look, they don't fall over. How cool is that? Alright, so here is my... Uh, did they give us numbers on the back? No, there's no numbers on the back. So I'm just going to try and find out which one is which. Uh, these are meant to be KD, but they're looking like almost KA. So I'm just going to compare the, the keys. Alright, one cut lower, this one. doesn't look like we're going to be able to recycle all the keys because we've got some with high and some with low. best we could do is probably recycle one or two of the keys. Alright, I'm going to go for this key here. So first thing I'll do is I'll find out which cylinder this works. Must be this one. Okay, that cylinder's now done. Alright, this is our cylinder here. And what I like to do is, um, easiest way with these ones is just to do a quick decode. And I just do that with the pins. That's only five pin, so we've got a four. In she goes. Four, yep, happy with that. Looks like a two there. Yep, happy with that. Five. So I'm just reading the key, gauging it up. Yep, happy with that. Is that five or six? Six. Yep, happy with that. And then the last one, I'm going to go for a one. Okay, whoa, no, two. Okay, now I've got the pins. I know my shear line's all good. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my pins down in order. I'm just going to pop one there, uh, one there, one, one Lego spacing apart so they don't get confused. Bang, and bang. All right, so now just looking at that, I can tell what my combination is. Uh, four, two, five, six, two. Okay, so if I forget it because somebody calls or somebody talks to me, it's no big deal. I've got my combination there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to need an Allen key. Here's an Allen key. Here's one from an old deadlock. Are we any good here? Uh, no, we're not. 
All right. So now, Allen key. They don't come with an Allen key. Wish they did. Ah, Allen key. All right. What size Allen key, you ask? Well, my vernier is working, I can tell you. Uh, two mil. Two mil. Right, it's always good to have a little drop tray for these, and I will introduce one right here. Drop tray. Alright, now time to undo it. This is the bit that takes a little bit of time. I mean, realistically, I should uh, get a little 2 mil on the end of uh, my drill to speed stuff up, but that would be extremely lazy considering. Okay, so just dropping all chambers. Now I've got a couple of these to do, I'm, I'm not going to take you through doing all of them because the principle is the same and if I do that you guys are going to fall asleep and the video would be very very long. Alright so I've got 10 of these grub screws to pull out and I've got to try and keep my springs. One of my springs has decided to leave the building but it only went so far so I can still see it on the bench and I, oop, and I will be saving that. There's another one that tried to escape and I'm using my uh, curry dishes where I buy from the Indian shop made of stainless steel so they stay clean easy to clean down and they only cost me a dollar a piece so, normally designed for those mixed dishes where you have three or four different types of dishes on the or different flavors on the one dish all right so here's the tenth one it's out I'm gonna use my key just to pop down all the pins make sure it's clear make sure it's clear visual inspection now can I see my key moving in and out uh, yes, I can on that side. You just got to get it on such an angle so you can see with a bit of light going through. Yeah, okay, I am clear. I'm going to leave my pins here and I'm going to use pins again out of the tray because I've got others to do and I want to keep that combination there. Although it's only five numbers to remember, you'd be surprised on how you can make a mistake or get uh, diverted or something happens and then you, you forget. We make a mistake, use the wrong pin. Was that five? Was that four? All right, so third chamber. As you can see, I'm working from the outside in, and whatever I'm doing on one side, I'm doing on the other side. Making sure you get, I'm getting the good shiny pins out of my pinning kit. Nothing worse than putting all together and then finding, hey, one side doesn't work, you have to drop them all again. So if I use the shiny pins, I know they're new and they're accurate. A lot of times pins can get confused, or people can mess up your pinning kit. All right, so driver pins now. Working from one side, my driver pins are the ones with two flat sides on it. Two, three, not using the bottom, not using the ones with the, with the point on it, using the ones that are flat on both sides. Okay, before I go any further, I like to spring one side up and triple check that my combination is good before I go any further and that my key's working good. If not, I can stop here. I don't want to do the other 10 steps and then find out, oh, no, I messed up. All right, this should be our key here, okay, and we are working. Double checking it, key goes in smoothly, putting it upside down so the pins are under pressure. No click, we're good. All right, so just uh, top pins now. Top pin, top pin, top pin. Three, four. Going for a spring, spring, the one that ran away, spring, spring, and spring. Okay, quick test. Beautiful. All right, now it's a simple matter of capping it off with these scrub screws, 10 to go. So I'm just going to start more, and then I'm going to go over the top of them with the key, starting with the fingers quicker, making sure they're going in the right way with the Allen key head up. Also these are bigger so they're easier on the fingers and you don't have to use your magnetic tweezers. Just one side. Some people do put Loctite on these. You can do that with all of the screw threads exposed. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as the Loctite does not go down into the chambers, you're okay. Okay, they're all 
drill capped. So I'm going to pull out my Loctite 243 and I'm just going to put a, just a little dob on them. Okay, I probably put way too much. Okay, now they've all got a little bit of uh, now they've all got a little bit of Loctite on them. I'm just going to wipe off all the excess. So basically, the only bit that's captured is really in the threads. You don't want too much. You don't want any of that Loctite to go down into the plugs. So what I might even do is, after I've done it up, I might even sit it upside down for five minutes, just let it dry off, so that no way that Loctite can get up into the chamber. So now just tightening them up. One. I'm just going to nip them up and I'm going to hit them all again. Notice how I'm doing this. I'm doing this on a downwards angle so there's no way any of that Loctite's going uphill or go downhill, if anything. And I did it with the screws out so there's no way it's going to come past the screw. Okay, nipping it up, one. Now I'm tightening them home. There's no particular order. Um. Okay, I'm happy with them. Give it a wipe. Okay, that looks good. I'll leave it like that for a few minutes. These are our keys here, I think. Yep, that's them. That's the thing with all the keys all over the bench. I really should have discarded them. Put them aside like all these ones here. They should be my pinning tray. Okay, I'm happy with that. Key goes in, key comes out. Beautiful. I'll sit it just like that and I'll do the next one. That's it. Leave your comments in the comment section. Uh, there'll be a link to where you can buy it. If you've enjoyed this, uh, hit the other link there and buy me a coffee. That'll be great. And see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.